You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. WGPR Detroit HD2. The views and opinions expressed on the following show are not necessarily the views and opinions of WHPS, its affiliates, management, or sponsors. Welcome to this week's edition of The Author Speaks, where we highlight some of Detroit's greatest authors and give them the opportunity to speak directly to you. I'm your host today, Sherry Jackson Caldwell, and today my special guest is none other than Renee Brown. Welcome to the show, Renee. Hi. Thank you for having me. Yes, yeah, she was with us a couple of weeks ago. We had a fantastic time. And so we decided to bring her back and to give us even more information. She, believe it or not, has done a lot since the last time we talked to her. And I just want you to hear all about what she's doing. And this book, for those of you uh, who didn't get a chance to see her, um, you are in for a treat. So make sure you stay tuned, all right? So we're going to get right into it today. Um, the name of the book is uh, Let Them Rest in Peace. I'm sorry, Living with Loss, Let Them Rest in Peace. And this is actually in the form of an ebook where you can download it. And I'm telling you, it is such an easy read. It's so helpful. I think it's safe to say just about everyone has experienced some form of loss and has dealt with some level of grief uh, probably different levels for different people I believe that everyone grieves differently but I do think a lot of people do not deal with their grief especially in our community um, I, I know when I was coming up you know going to therapy and things of that nature was not popular um, actually kind of looked down upon you know and just wasn't something that we as black people did and we came up in a culture where religion was everything so you just prayed about it get over it move on but um, now that time has progressed we're finding out that we need to get help for these things and grief is a serious weight for a lot of people that has them stuck and um, there is help available and so that's why I love your book because it is a self-help tool you. and so I'm gonna stop talking and give you the <laughs> opportunity to tell us about your book well the book came out of um, a period in my life where I was grieving and I was very depressed but you're right so many people grieve for years and years and years and I've had people say to me on multiple occasions, you can't tell anybody how long to grieve. You can't tell anybody how to grieve. No, you can't. But at some point, grief will consume you. Um, and grief can just take you out. It really can. Um, you know, I, I watch a show called Hoarders. And so many episodes, it comes from grief um they're holding on to things of their their mother their father their grandma i mean i'm talking about they can have four four houses in their house because and they just feel so guilty about letting something go um do you have anything to say about that i certainly do mm -hmm. so i have a real life um situation okay i have an aunt my uncle died maybe five years ago mm -hmm. And before he died, they had to move to assisted living because she couldn't take care of him. Mm -hmm. She has a house right now. And as a realist, I'm a real estate agent, so I've been telling her all this time, you need to sell that house. The house is in a desirable neighborhood in a suburb of Detroit. 
And so last summer she took myself and my sister in there and we were shocked, shocked because I'm not a huge person, but my sister's smaller than me. We had to shimmy through the house because she won't let it go. I go, hey, I'm a whole real estate agent. Mm -hmm. I can sell this house. There are plenty of people who won't let stuff go. So j update to that story, just last week, we took her car that she's been holding on to. She had two cars. She hasn't driven in years. Mm. We took her car to a dealership to sell it. The car is a 2015. It has 9,000 miles on it. She was holding on to it. Yeah. And, you know, I don't judge anyone. Um, I've been a widow for 16 years. And I remember my, when my husband died, it took me six months to throw his toothbrush away. I just couldn't even... I couldn't even go in that bathroom and clean it. I couldn't do anything because it just hurt me so bad, you know. And so I get it, you know, but it's important to, like you said, it's when you let it consume you to the point where you can't function, you can't move on, you're depressed all of the time, you need to get help. And um, I, the book was such an easy read. Um, the first part was I just love the first part when you talked about how uh, people say things to you oh my. <laughs> and they think they're being comforting. And I, even me, I once it happened to me, I realized like, you know what, that is dumb to say I know how you feel because you don't know how I feel, you know. Uh, and, and, and I just want to read some of the ones you had in the book. Okay, that's fine. And, you know, they'll tell you, well, they lived a, a good long life and, and they're better off and uh, God needed to add another flower to the garden. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think are some comforting things that we can say um, <laughs> instead of, you know, embarrassing ourselves or making a person feel uncomfortable? Do you have any words of comfort that you can offer? Well, I think a couple of things that you can do is ask them what they need. Wow. Yes. It's just simple. Mm -hmm. Do you need anything? Mm -hmm. And continue to follow up as as you know People won't speak up, mm -hmm. and especially if they have a need, they won't speak up. Um, they're embarrassed. So I think just letting them know you're here for them, um, just being a part of their life, even if you want to in the background pray for them. But don't say I'm praying for you and you don't pray for them. Exactly. And and one other thing I want to say, you know, we love to go storm over people's houses, you know, 200 people strong, tear up the people's house, don't know when to go home, don't stay at them people's house at 10, 11 o'clock, they're tired. And then after the funeral, you don't hear or see nobody. That's the other part. Um, and that's why people need support afterwards. Because in the height of the moment, mm -hmm. believe it or not, grief is an emotion, um, also it's a spirit. And if you hold on to it too long, it'll t attach itself to you. Um, but during the height of the moment, you can function because you have all this support around you. But then you ask yourself afterwards, where'd everybody go? Yeah. Now, unfortunately for me and my family, I'm the one who, because everybody else is checked out, I can't, I don't have the luxury <laughs> to to even stop to cry because when everybody is checked out, somebody got to check in to do everything. And so I found myself, it could be a month or so later, and I'm like, wait a minute, did that just happen? You know, but um, like you said, for everybody, it's different, you know, and... Um, Especially according to your role with the person. Yes. And your role in the family. Exactly. You know, if if you're the one that's the one in charge, you know, um, I remember when my cousin, her, her brother died and she got ready to, to cry. Her daddy said, oh, no, you can't do that. I, I need you. You know, <laughs> and, it, and it's, it's not fair how we treat each other sometimes. It's not. I think and I, what I think is we don't realize that that person is grieving too. You said your your uncle told your cousin, "Oh no, you can't cry." Right. 
she's grieving her brother. Yes, sir, that was your son, mm -hmm. but that's still her brother. And I think I've never been a widow. I've lost a lot of people in my life, but I've never been a widow. And when you told me the story about how the paint was even peeling off the walls, mm -hmm. that was profound. But I think that and you said that because there was no life in the room. Yeah, so what she's talking about is I was telling her that um, my husband uh, ha used to use the, the um, master bath, the, the bathroom and the master bedroom, excuse me. And um, after he died, I just didn't want to go in there. Like I said, it was six months later before I went in there and, and tried to throw anything away or do anything about it. But I noticed when I went in that bathroom, the paint was peeling. And um, my mother told me a long time ago that a house needs the breath of life. When you don't have the breath of life in there, a house will deteriorate. Have you ever thought about if a house is just sitting there, how did it get run down like this? Because there's no life. Our breath literally gives life even to a room. We call it in the real estate world, we call it um, deferred maintenance okay. when a house is falling apart like that. Mm -hmm. But when you defer maintenance for your own body and for your own spirit, you deteriorate. Mm -hmm. um, so when a person passes and you're the, either the caregiver or you're the strong one, you need time to grieve as well. I had a friend tell me that she never really properly grieved her mother because she was the planner, the caregiver, her brother fell apart, her chil her daughter fell apart, and she never had a chance to grieve. As we were talking about it, cause I interviewed lots of people for this book, lots of people. I interviewed doctors, nurses, attorneys, and they're, by the way, they're all uh, resources in the back of the book. Okay. Um, for people, if you need a real estate, I have real estate people in other states. Mm. Um, I can give referrals for attorneys and um, I even have a florist that I put her in the back of the book and she ships all over the country. However, if you don't, when you're handling all the business of the death, you sometimes don't grieve the death. Yeah, that's exactly what happened to me. Um, I definitely experienced that one one time where I just everybody was checked out and I had to like step up and do what I had to do and I think it was about two or three months later and it just hit me and I just screamed and I cried and just went through all of it at one time you know so I definitely understand what you're saying and I appreciate that book for you know being a one-stop convenience because you know a lot of times for so many people, you just don't even think about it, you know, at at one point. And so, you know, I've even began to have a conversation even with my parents. Like, I want everything written down because I don't want to be trying to remember what school you went to and all of that stuff. You know, while while we're in the same calm moment. There are resources for that. I have a friend. I'm giving her a shameless plug. She's developed a... um document is called my perfect will mm -hmm. where you can write your favorite recipes what high school you went to wow. your favorite song um just in june i lost my favorite aunt in the whole mm -hmm. wide world if if anybody knows me they knew about her okay. the people at work when i used to work for the state of michigan um they would walk up she would give you five dollars mm -hmm. for your birthday i'm talking about as an adult <laughs> She would send you $5 for your birthday, um, and she was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Even at her funeral, it, w it was sad. I cried the whole way to Chicago, uh, and I'm not even a crier, mm -hmm. but it's the way that you grieve. There are five different stages of grief that people go through. You don't go through them all. Okay. You don't go through them all at the same time. You just you, you deal with it, and I think that when people shut down after a death, that grief consumes you, and God does not want us consumed with grief. He created us to be happy beings. Yes. I remember, so we have a Facebook page, too, Living With Loss. Let them rest in peace. Um, okay. This lady put on Facebook that her 8-year-old died. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he died. And I said, oh, my God, that is so unnatural. She said, I don't know why people are trying to get me to be angry at God, but I'm not. I said, I didn't say for you to be angry at God. What I said was, that's unnatural for a parent 
to bury a child. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, when we come back, I want to talk about some of those stages of grief. I want to talk about the new direction you're taking this with. Um, and also, I want to talk about that real estate. So, we're getting ready to go to a break. I want you to uh, make sure that you stay tuned. We're getting ready to go to a commercial where you can find out how you can order the book. All right, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Watkins Broadcasting is going worldwide. Now you can watch Detroit's own WHPR on your TV from anywhere in the world. No matter where you are, you can stay in the know with WHPR TV and Roku. You can get your easy-to-install Roku box from wherever you shop for your entertainment gear. Once your Roku box is connected to your TV and internet, go to the channel store on the home menu of the Roku box. Enter WHPR TV in the search engine and add it to your channels. That's it. That's all you need to get the best in entertainment, news, and talk no matter where you are. Roku brings all of your favorites to your TV. Netflix, Hulu Plus, Crackle, HBO Go, and now WHPR TV, Detroit Live. Muscles, joints, or feet tired, achy, or distressed? Tried everything? Ringmaster Rubbing Oil is a vintage topical pain reliever, trusted for over 70 years, with a rich formula for the treatment of stubborn aches and pains. Packaged in a glass bottle for purity, our liquid can also be used in warm water for foot soaks and compresses. A little goes a long way. Try our time-tested formula, available in several sizes. Make a donation to WHBR-TV and receive two two-ounce bottles of Ringmaster Rubbing Oil for $25. Call 313-868-6612. In the world of digital broadcasting, transmitters and exciters sometimes do this. If this happens when you're watching WHPR-TV 33, please do this. Watch us on Fire Stick, Roku, Apple TV, Google TV, or TV33WHPR.com. Download the WHPR-TV app, and we can also be heard on Amazon Echo. So remember, if you see this, you can do this and support the station that supports you. Welcome back to The Author Speaks, where we give the author an opportunity to talk directly to you. Again, my special guest today is Renee Brown, and we are talking about her wonderful book, which is entitled Living with Loss, Let Them Rest in Peace. And one thing I want to talk about before we go is um, you talked about giving people permission to go. And I think that is so important. I remember one time I was praying for my pastor. He was sick. And I actually went to go visit him. And when I saw him and how much pain he was in, I made up my mind that day to stop praying. Because we were holding him selfishly in this body that was just, like, not good for him anymore. So would you like to expound on that a little bit? Certainly. So when my mother was um, in transition, mm -hmm. it's been 10 years, Okay. Um, the hospice people said that people linger because they have unfinished business. Um, so we called everybody, all her grandchildren, all over the country, mm -hmm. not the world, the country. <laughs> and I started calling her cousins mm -hmm. and everybody. Mm -hmm. 
and finally she let go and i also interviewed a indian person he was hindu mm -hmm. and what he told me it's in a book um, i don't know if you read that part what he told me was his grandmother had nine children and his mother was one of the nine children and she all the grandchildren the great grandchildren everybody had visited her mm -hmm. everybody mm -hmm. she would not let go wow and so his mom had to read their holy book to her it took her a couple of weeks she he said she sat there all day long and she would just read 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 and finally when she finished within eight no i'm sorry within a couple of hours she passed away and that, that is very real. I experienced something uh, similar with my husband was a pastor, and it was just on my mind to visit this particular member. I had no idea she was at this level um, of sickness because um, the last time I saw her, she was doing, you know, relatively okay. And so anyway, when we got there, um, I was just totally shocked at her condition, and my husband began to speak to her, and he told her, he said, this is your pastor, and... I remember him telling her, you can go now. And when we got in the car, he said, she's been waiting on me. And within six hours, she was gone. And the family told us that she had been like that for, for four days. She had not moved or done anything. But when she heard his voice, she kind of, you know, moved Perked a little. Up. Yeah, she did something. So, yeah, that that is, uh, that is something. But, you know, we have to learn uh, not to be selfish. Don't try to hold people, you know, in in a body that that has you know that's given up that's deteriorating the doctors call it quality of life quality of life when mm -hmm. my niece for instance she had an accident well so what happened she was standing at a bus stop mm -hmm. on her way to work a guy had just left the hospital he hit the bus stop he had a heart attack he died immediately wow and it broke her neck and she ended up dying um <clears throat> But it's just they linger until they get what they want. I remember the nurse told me that we decided to donate her organs. So I remember the nurse told me um, her heart was beating too fast. Her heart was racing, racing, racing. And so the nurse told me if she doesn't, if her heart doesn't slow down, we're going to lose her and we'll lose her organs mm -hmm. because she'll have a heart attack. Mm -hmm. So I asked the nurse, I said, can she hear me? The nurse said, yes, the story is crazy. I said, well, <clears throat> I'll go talk to her. And the nurse goes, wait. I said, why? She says, I get off at 7 o'clock, and if something happens, they're going to make me stay. <laughs> so I said, I, I'll give you the 7.15, but I'm going in and talk to her. Mm -hmm. She says she can hear you. She knows what's going on around her, all of that. And so I go into her. And I tell her, I said, well, maybe nobody even told her why she was in the hospital. So mm -hmm. I go in and I talk to her and I tell her what's, what happened to her. And I tell her that, you know, we're going to, if she decides that she wants to go, I said, if you want to fight, we're going to take care of you. I said, but if you want to go, this is what is going to happen. My niece was such a giving person. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, she gave everything. Mm -hmm. um, I told her, I said, your, your liver they can only save part of it. I said, it's going to an infant. I said, your spleen is going to a young lady your age. And I just began to tell her all the, the places. I said, your lungs, mm -hmm. where they're going. I said, the doctors are coming in. I just told her the whole story. So that was Saturday. On Tuesday, when they went to take her off of life support and harvest her organs, just before that, the nurse told me, she said, come here. I said, what? She said, I don't know what you said to her. She said, however, her heart rate was normal the whole weekend. Okay. So they can hear they you. They can hear you. And, and that, they know what's comforting. going on around them. Mm -hmm. That's comforting to know. Um, our time is almost up, but I have got to talk about you have taken this book to a whole nother level by creating products um, to help honor the person, which is a part of letting them rest in peace. Instead yes. of boohooing about it all of the time, do something uplifting to honor them. So you have T-shirts. What else do you have? So I, I, I'm, they're developing. It should be done by tomorrow okay. or, 
or what's today? Today's Tuesday, maybe Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, they're developing um, a store for me where you can get T-shirts, hats, pins, um, those little cubes that are holograms. Oh, wow, that you can, like, sit on the table. That you can on sit a on a coffee table okay. or a desk or mm -hmm. wherever you like. But mm -hmm. these things will be available on the store, even pins. I know we give out, we give out obituaries right. when people die. Mm -hmm. What about a pin? With the person's name on it, um, that would be something you can give away that would honor that person. So like writing pens? Yes, writing okay. pens. Mm -hmm. um, people too often, because I know me, I got a stack of obituaries because I think it's sacred or something, and I don't want to throw them away. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, I do too. But I, I think that's a, a culture thing. Yeah, yeah. I do. I think that we don't want to let them go. I think if we throw the obituary away, we might be letting them go. Well, I need it because for the, the historian in me. Exactly. Because sometimes you, can, you can't remember, you know, all of those kids and things of that nature. But um, I think that is an awesome idea that you've come up with. So if we want to order products from you, what's your phone number? 248-971-0048. And then there's an email address. It's called help at living with loss, R-I-P dot org. Um, you can email me or call me, and um, I will give you updates on when those things will be available. Also, if you need just, just even to call or talk, um, sometimes I'm available. Um, I do sell real estate, so if, you, if, I'm, if I don't answer, I might be out showing a house or listing a house or something. Okay, well, that is good to know. I'm just so excited that you came back to be with me. It's always a treat to talk to you because you have so much information. Uh, again, what's that Facebook page? The Facebook page is called Living With Loss, Let Them R.I.P. And please okay. join the Facebook page. Yes. Um, I, I believe that the Facebook page, the book, the course, all of that was designed by God because people are grieving. They're mm -hmm. hurting. The pandemic made it worse. I um, also researched the suicide rate. Suicide is the 12th killer. I can believe that. I can believe that. Country. And it is rising in our community. It wasn't like that when I was a teenager, but now it's, it's not really uncommon to hear of that. So, um, again, please... Uh, Take advantage of the resources that Ms. Brown has given us. At least get on that Facebook page. Uh, check out her book. And, uh, I mean, the, the help is available. Don't, don't wallow in grief and don't let it take you out. Um, Please. Live. Live, 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 live. All right. Our time is up. But... We've got some great programming coming up. So I want you to keep it locked into this station. Why? Because we are the greatest in the nation. You are watching WHPR Studios.